G'day and welcome to another exciting episode of The Robbo Show. You know, a lot of people have been tweeting in asking me, what is it that I actually do at the Melbourne Football Club? You know, I'm there on game days, I'm here at the club doing The Robbo Show. Well, I can tell you my title. It's a very important job that I do. Very specific. I am the Director of Strategic Synergy Relations Manager. Very cutting edge, very new... Excuse me a second. Hello, reception. How am I, Director Call? Please hold. Today we've got the skill tester with Mark Jamar, Liam Jarrow's in for Remember When, and as always, Maxi Gorn's got Gorn in 60 seconds. But first, let's hit up the pool with the big Russian Mark Jamar. Russia, right, thanks for mate? meeting me, man. Great to see you, brother. Now, you, you, the skill test here, pumped about this? I am very nervous. I hear it's a very important part of the day, it's, so... If not the most important part of the show, the skill test, you oh, I go all right go. with these things, don't you worry about that. Excellent. Uh, we're going to be in the pool in a second. Before we get to tell you what we're going to do, I'm going to ask you, you're getting married this year, is that right? Getting married, mate, yes. Big step in life. Uh, who's a lucky, lucky lady, and where's it all going down? Yep, so my fiancé, Dulcie. Um, been together for a bit over two years now, and um, yeah, getting married in uh, in the city at St Patrick's Church there. Yes, and uh, yeah, can't wait. It's going to be good. Very pleased to see you're actually settling down. It took a while. It took a while. Yeah. He's a wild man in his day, but geez, very very sensible now. Getting married, ah, mate. It. The skill test. Uh, we're going to do some bombs in the pool. Oh, awesome. <laughs> let's do yeah, it. Well, my head's bigger than your yeah. behind, so <laughs> yeah. I might make a bigger splash. Well, I don't know about that. Anyway, <laughs> let's go. Oh, Russian skill tester. It's all about diving. Who can make the biggest splash? Who can make the biggest fool of themselves? All right. Pretty nervous, mate. mate all right. It's a body like yours, it should make a big splash. But I've been in a good panic. Don't worry about that. I'll go first. Ready? No worries. Here, right. we, go. Here we go. Okay, Rush. Talk to me about yeah. how it's going down here. You're one of the older guys now. Yeah, third well, oldest. A lot of young kids running around. Yeah, that's it. Feel like you, a grandpa. How do you uh, take on that role now? You always had guys around teaching you stuff. You started off with Jeff White as your mentor. Us older guys are gone, and now you're the mentor. So yeah, I know. you do extra. It's uh, it's really different. Like, I mean, it's weird to think I'm actually giving advice now and helping out the younger guys like Jake Spencer, Max Gorn, you know, Jack Fitzpatrick, and these sort of guys. So. Um, I enjoy it, I love it. Um, it's good, like, you've been around for a while and little things that they don't pick up, you can actually just give them a little advice on. Yeah. And the good thing is, they're a bit fresher in the legs than me, yeah. so they're always <laughs> running, running yeah. and running. Big Jake that. Spencer just runs around at training, I've got to try and catch him, so he keeps me on my toes and I've got to stay up with their fitness levels, so it's yeah. good. Good, good. All right, mate, last part of the skill tester. I want to see who can hold their breath the longest. Oh, God. Well, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're going to go down the pool swimming, all right? You're going to go first, swim as far as you can under the water, and then I'm going to try and beat you, all right? Yeah, it's good. All right, let's do it. Ready? Hello, Russian. Go, big fella. Go.
good. It's gonna be tough to beat. I've got to beat him though, jeez. Come on, so I'm gonna give it my absolute all, folks. I'm gonna try my hardest to get as much distance as I can, alright? So, wish me luck. I haven't got time for this, so I'm gonna go to training. Hopefully, he's alright. Next up, we've got the big, beautiful man, Maxi Gorn, with Gorn in 60 Seconds. Thanks, Robbo. Welcome back to Gorn in 60 Seconds, the award-winning segment. We've got Clint Bartram this week all the way from the back pocket. Are you ready to take on Gorn in 60 Seconds? Oh, as ready as I'll ever be, Maxi. Right, to start us off. When you want to go to a bar, would you catch the tram? Oh, next question, mate. It's ordinary. Keep going. You've been for a surf with Nathan Jones. You have to use words like gnarly, hang ten, and wipe out to talk to him. You do have to get permission from mates to use those words, yes. You play on small forwards every week. Do you have an amazing pest tolerance? Yes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> what was better viewing? James Magner's performance last week on Gorn in 60 seconds or Wag Nation? Much of muchness. Jimmy was ordinary and he knows that. Is it true you're known as a teddy bear because you like to cuddle? Just giving the ladies what they want, Max. If the game AFL didn't involve disposing the ball, do you think you'd win a Brownlow? I have thought about taking out rugby. Jade Rawlins in one word. Intense. Who has more common sense? Chipper or the guys off Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> um, yeah, probably neither. <laughs> Were you as surprised as everyone else when you kicked that check side goal? Nah, pretty stock standard kick, so. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Clint Bartram. Thanks for having me. <laughs> And seeing as it's Indigenous round, I thought it a great opportunity to catch up with Lee and Jarrah and talk about his first game in a very special Remember When. Remember when this week is two number 24s, Liam Jarrah, how you going pal? Yeah, good mate. Good sir. to see you mate. Yeah, too, mate. Now, you're back playing football, we're all excited. You, you, we, we might be seeing you this weekend donning the Melbourne 24 Goonsy again. You know a lot of great footballers have worn the 24 number. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's usual, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> good to be back playing footy mate? Yeah, no, it's good to be back playing again and want to be out there, just enjoy playing footy. I know you love your footy and it showed that first game, because that's what I want to talk about, your first game against Essendon, I think it was round 15, 2009, you came out of the box and you've nearly taken the most amazing mark and your first first goal was a special goal, wasn't it? Tell me about the feelings of a first game. Oh, the first game was a bit, bit, of, bit, bit I was a bit nervous, but at the same time I was excited because I had my mum and my grandma down, yeah. my aunties down as well, that was a special uh, for me, yeah, for my family. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's a special time for everyone when they play their first game. Family comes and watches, and and you just get all this emotion, don't you? And you had Aaron Davy out there, and you had some real, some real friends playing with you because I know you hang around with Flash. You even live with Flash, and for a while there, and yeah, you know, he's he's been great for you, hasn't he? Yeah, and no, he took me under his wing in my first year, and Matty Whelan as well, and we had Ozzy, Wanna Mary, and. Another guy, Jamie Pinnell and Neville Cheddar. Yeah, yeah. Six of us. Good mates. Listen his boys, yeah. Good mates. They're inseparable too. And some of the funniest stuff you have ever heard around a football club is when these boys get together, they are hilarious. Anyway, I'll leave that for you guys. <laughs> you have to find that out. Now that mark and goal, I mean, you got up, nearly taken the mark, came down and kicked it off the ground. That Was was that your first goal? Yeah, that was my first goal. Pretty exciting. Yeah, pretty Way exciting when I, I thought I had a chance to mark the ball, but... Had another defender coming across, and yeah. as I was coming down, I 
lucky lucky enough to kick a goal. Yeah. What about when you're playing football as a junior? I know growing up in Tasmania, I didn't have a lot of fans watching. You know, Central Australia, you wouldn't have had too many people around the, around the ovals. And then you come down, you play for Casey, and then there's a few people watching. And then you get to Eddie Head Stadium, and there's thousands. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? That feeling. Yeah, I guess it's more different than playing junior footy back home. Like there's, there's no um, that much crowd in the footy ground. Yeah. But in the, especially at the um, 88 or MCG or wherever you're playing, it's going to be big, big crowd. Big crowd and loud, and you sort of feel it inside your yeah. body, don't when they yeah. scream, especially yeah. when you get up yeah. for those marks. Yeah. Do you think it's the power of the 24 Guernsey that gets you up a hang? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of people don't know this, but Liam actually asked me if he could wear the number 24 Guernsey. Now, you get a lot of honours in football and playing your first game's great. You know, playing 100th, 200th game's great, but that was a big honour of mine when you asked to wear my jumper. So, thanks for doing that, brother. I appreciate it. No, I <laughs> What about uh, this year, mate? How are the Demons going? And yeah, Do you feel like it's going to turn and it's going to get better? Yeah, we actually are playing a good footy at the moment and we just got to keep improving every week, especially in the training and then trying to play in the game day as well. That's what we're going to be doing this week, going yeah. out there and just play the footy. Yep. yep. Do you see yourself as a leader around the club now? I mean, there's a lot of young kids come in and you've sort of been around for a couple of years or are you still just finding your way through? Oh, I still got a lot of room to improvement. Like, I've got to improve on speaking in front of the group or just in front of the um, Division meeting as well. Yep, yep, yep. No, that's a tough one. You always got to get up and talk about football in front of big groups of people. It's, you don't think you've got to do that. You think you just got to kick a footy around, handball the footy around. But there's also, you know, as a leader of a football club, it's it's telling blokes what to do. That's hard, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, will you reckon it'd be like playing the first game again if you play? If you play this week, um, I'm sure you will. We can't let anything away just yet, but uh, you're going to be like that first game getting out there. You'll be that excited and pumped. And uh, I'll be pretty much nervous as well. Nervous. It's, it's my first game back and yeah, yeah. haven't been playing game. I've played two, two games with Casey the last couple of weeks since I had a surgery last year, just before Christmas. Now that was your wrist, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you've had some problems with your wrist, but yeah. that seems to be all right now? Yeah, no, it's all right. Well, I don't remember much about my first game. I even don't, I don't think I remembered much about it a week later because it's just so amazing. So much is going on, it's yeah. frantic and it's electric, it's amazing. So all those kiddies out there, if you get a chance to play AFL footy, that first game's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. LJ, you're a legend. Thanks, no, brother. Nice, Good on you, mate. Good luck this week. No, hey, I know you're playing. I know you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's been the Robbo Show. Now, I hope by now you figured it out that I actually am very important around this football club. I do some groundbreaking stuff, and I don't do anything that's Mickey Mouse. Stay tuned next week. It's going to be awesome. See you then. M-O-U-S-E. Oh, God, I got my footy.